Hey everyone, I'm back now. Um, as you can see, it's after gun season here and uh, got a little bit cool. Noticed I had some problems with my battery for my jacket. Uh, thing didn't really hold a charge, didn't really run very good. It'd heat up for like a minute and shut off. Kind of frustrating really when you're sitting in a stand freezing. Um, I'm going to take you through the process of Tearing this thing apart, checking it, putting new cells in it, and getting back to working. This is a or Oro brand off of Amazon. You can go buy another one if you want, but what fun is that when we can fix the one we got for just a few dollars? Okay, so here's the battery pack, and I went through and actually popped the case already. The all you have to do is I took a utility knife and I just slowly pried around. The edges, I started up here on the top near the USB port and I went all the way around and just slowly pried it. You, d you have to use some force. Um, as you can see, there's these little clips all the way around, right? And those are what you're trying to disengage. So if you can get this case apart, inside, at least inside of this one, we have these great power lithium ion cells. Great power, I'm sure that sounds like a reputable brand. 2600 milliamp, 3.7 volts. Now, if I look on the back of this unit, we'll see that this is a 7.4 volt battery pack. And since these are both, these are 3.7, they're two sets in two sets. Okay, so this is 3.7. In parallel and this is 3.7 in parallel and this set here is in series with this set so what we're gonna do is show you how to determine which sets are bad first off and then we'll go into replacing these cells just a little note the actual button um, that goes right here in the case something easy to lose so just make sure you keep track of that while you're turning this part to do this you're gonna need a voltage meter if you've watched my videos before um, you've seen this trusty Craftsman one I've had for many, many years. Um, this one's pretty hard to find. I'll put some links in the description for an easier, just as capable, if not better one than, uh, than this one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to turn us ourselves to the voltage DC. Um, make sure we read zero and you're going to see on your battery pack that they have this protective, um, paper on the side of the cells, both sides. So you're gonna have to peel that back a little bit, okay? And we're gonna check the voltage of these cells. So on the cell, you'll see a little indentation on the cell here. That's where they press the positive side of the cap onto the metal body of the, the, the cell. So we know this is the positive side and this is the negative side on this particular cell. Um, these are positive here and these are opposite just the way that the pack is arranged, like I said, in series. So we're going to put this in here and this in here. And we're going to see that the voltage here is 3.57. Okay. Now we're going to go to the other side because we know these are in series two by two. We're going to check the other set of cells. Okay. This is 4.04 .04 resting and this hasn't been used. Um, so we know that these cells here are quite a bit unbalanced from these cells here. And it tells me that these cells are probably failing. Um, they're a lower voltage. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop these out um, and we're going to replace probably all of the cells because I don't have any cells that are exactly this brand and this specs, okay? So rather than try to match cells and all that, we're going to get four cells that I know are matched and we're going to replace the whole block. You can replace cells if you want, if you know what they are, but you're going to need to match the milliamp hours of the cells with the other cells to, to make sure you have a decent pack. So we're going to unsolder these two points here. There's going to be a point on the back here that we need to desolder. And then here we're going to pull the tape off and pull this up. Pull that out. Okay, 
So there's the first thing. I'm just going to fold that out of the way. Now, my soldering iron is pretty warm. I start desoldering these posts. Take the positive off first. There we go. And the negative is off. We got the two, two battery posts off. Okay. Now we're going to pop these cells, hopefully. They're glued in on the top, so I'm sure they're glued in on the bottom, too. Okay, we're back with a screwdriver, and we're just going to work on this a little bit. I don't want to, obviously don't want to break my plastic, so I'm just going to go nice and slow. Let's get the screwdriver under there and twist the head of it. Um, just, there we go. Now it popped. All right. So I'm going to pull off this, this plastic, or paper trace on here. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to get this yellow battery balancing wire off of here. And they've got it soldered on right there. So that wire is basically on the and there we go. So now we have our batteries isolated really what we have to do is make a new tack like this. So what you can see is here is the original orientation. We have a negative on the top here, a negative on the top here. There was no connection between these two sides, here and here. And then this one is connected here with a positive and a positive. Then if we flip this over, we have a band that goes all the way across, right? This is soldered from here to here, here to here, all the way across, and, and that was the part that, that tore out, so we'll have to fix that up. So again, I'm going to be making a new battery pack with these four batteries. I'll find some batteries on Amazon that would uh, be as good or better than these in terms of capacity. Um, like I said, these are 2600 milliamps, so we should be shooting for that or, or higher. Um, it's always kind of a interesting thing finding batteries that are actually what they are rated to be but uh, if you buy a, a brand name one they're usually pretty good okay so i have a bunch of these cells laying around from some old tool packs that i found and these are actually 2800 milliamp cells um, according to the drawdown i did with this guy um if you guys are interested in, in doing more of these types of projects with batteries i highly recommend a charger like this they're Fairly cheap. This is a B6 AC IMAX dual power charger. There's all kinds of actual and counterfeit ones out there on the internet. I'll link one in the description for you guys. Um, and then I made a 3D printed um, battery charging tray for it so I can balance cells and stuff and discharge them to figure out what their milliamp hour rating is and all that stuff. So we'll go from there. Now I've had these cells in here for, I don't know, maybe half hour and since they're all put in the same and they're all wired in parallel um, they've balanced themselves and then I put a little charge on them just to make sure that everything is is balanced and, and charging properly and they are nothing's getting warm um, during the charging process and I previously checked these cells so I know they're good so I'm going to take these four cells out and we're going to build a new pack with them okay you see I put uh, each of these cells in their own um, banks of two and I've taped them just some paper tape it just makes it easier to work with and I'm gonna put these standing them straight up on my table um, and then I've actually taken a piece of this copper wire it started out as round um, but when these bus bars break these nickel ones that are really cheap and I don't have that material on, on hand I just go and pound this on my back of my vise where it's flat with a hammer and make a flat piece of copper. Copper is very conductive, it works really good, it solders easily. So we're gonna use that. So what I'm gonna do is put this on here, measure it up, cut it right here for this side, and then we'll cut the rest of the pieces we need for the other side and the tabs for mounting this. Uh, we'll see if we need tabs, we might be able to just mount it direct to the copper bus bar. <clears throat> so let's get started. Okay. So we got those tinned a little bit. It could be better, but 
I don't want to transfer too much heat on there. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to get this copper on here. Um, I want to kind of measure this up. And then I'm going to snip it probably right about here. So now I'm going to go and lay this on top of here. I'm getting these soldered here. This is uh, actually soldering a lot more difficultly than most of the cells that I do. Um, I think it mostly has to do with the cells and maybe this copper wire or this solder. This is a new roll of solder and it's just not, it's not loving this at all. Um, let's see here. The nice thing is, is we don't need it to be a perfect, great connection. It's got to be strong enough to hold up in that plastic right there. So that's the side that's all together. Now, what we need to do is flip it over. We need to connect this one to this one and this one to this one, but not across these two. Now, if you have new batteries, you're not going to have all this garbage on top. Um, these are used batteries. And I should have told you it's best to kind of pound that stuff down or get it, get rid of it entirely because otherwise your new, new bars aren't going to sit on there real nice. But All right, so now we're just going to measure here to here. We'll clip that wire, set this on here. And we'll do the same thing over here. Just kind of get an eyeball. I want the edge to line up with kind of the center of the solder so I can get some solder to wrap around each side. It's just easier to solder it that way. Now that we have the pack built um, and soldered up here, we can just double check that we have everything right. Um, we we'll probably have sparks and smoke before this if, if you don't have everything right but let's just make sure okay so here we've got the two negative sides and then here we've got two two positive sides so we know this here and this here and you can see we have 7.72 volts now these aren't charged all the way um, so that's a good reading for what we need right now we can also go and check individual cells but we already did that with these and we know they're good so we're ready to put this pack back into the container. Okay, I'm also going to solder these little tabs back on here or some similar tabs to what we had before um, just to make it easier to fit all this back in the original packaging. I, I could probably solder these down in, in there but it's just going to be easier to make a tab. Okay my camera died um, while I was doing this. But what I ended up doing is taking some of this original nickel plated um, ribbon conductor here and I use the original ones and then I just pin those on here. This this solder I think is garbage like I've never had this is the first time I used it so these soldering jobs look awful but they're still gonna work so you get the idea. All right, the next step here is to get everything put back together. Um, we still have to get this battery management system wire back here. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We want to make sure our positive, our red, is marked and lined up with the positive side of our pack, which is this side here with the indents and the battery tabs on them. And then our negative is lined up with our negative. We also have to put the temperature transmitter uh, or sensor in here as well. So first we're going to start with the yellow wire, then we're going to go ahead and do the black, then the red, and then the temperature. Okay, so now we have the pack put together. We have all the new cells in. We have the temperature sensor in. We've got the packs wired up, all the connectors on. All we have to do now is get the button back in there. And put the cover back on. 
Okay. So here it all snaps back together. Okay. Now you can see I've got it all snapped back together. You can see a few artifacts of the original popping it apart, but no big deal. Um, got the button here at the battery. Press the button and you get three bars. So we have successfully repaired our Aurora battery pack for our heated vests. So hopefully this helped you out. Good luck. If you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thank you.